Chapter 41 of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Women of History by Anonymous. Chapter 41. Lady Packington, 1679, Ballard. Daughter of Thomas, Lord Covington, Keeper of the Great Seal, and wife of Sir John Packington, was well known to and celebrated by the best and most learned divines of her time. Yet hardly my pen will be thought capable of adding to the reputation her own has procured her, if it shall appear that she was the author of a work which is not more an honor to the writer than a universal benefit to mankind. The work, I mean, is The Whole Duty of Man, her title to which has been so well ascertained that the general concealment it has lain under will only reflect a luster upon all her other excellences by showing that she had no honor in view but that of her creator which i suppose she might think best promoted by this concealment the claims of other authors are not difficult to be disposed of if i were a roman catholic i would assume tradition as an evidence for me upon this occasion which has constantly attributed this performance to a lady and a late celebrated writer observes that there are many probable arguments in the whole duty of man to back a current report that it was written by a lady, and any one who reads the lady's calling may observe a great number of passages which clearly indicate a female hand. That vulgar prejudice of the supposed incapacity of the female sex is what these memoirs in general may possibly remove, and as I have had frequent occasion to take notice of it, I should not now enter again upon that subject. Had not this been made use of as an argument to invalidate Lady Packington's title to those performances, it may not be amiss, therefore, to transcribe two or three passages from the treatise I have just now mentioned. But waiving these reflections, I shall fix only on the personal accomplishments of the sex, and peculiarly that which is the most principal endowment of the rational nature. I mean the understanding where it will be a little hard to pronounce that they are naturally inferior to men, when it is considered how much of the intrinsic weight is put in the balance to turn it to the men's side. Men have their parts cultivated and improved by education, refinement, and subtilized by learning and arts, are like a piece of the common, which by industry and husbandry become a different thing from the rest, though the natural turf owned no such inequality, we may therefore conclude that whatever vicious impotence women are under, it is acquired, not natural, nor derived from any illiberality of God's, but from the ill managery of his bounty. Let them not charge God foolishly, or think that by making them women he necessitated them to be proud or wanton, vain or peevish, since it is manifest he made them to better purpose, was not partial to the other sex, but that having, as the prophet speaks, abundance of spirit. He equally dispensed it, and gave the feeblest woman as large and capacious a soul as that of the greatest hero. Nay, give me leave to say farther, that as to the eternal well-being, he seems to have placed them in more advantageous circumstances than he has done men. He has implanted in them some native propensions, which do much facilitate the operations of grace upon them. And having made good this assertion, she interrogates thus. How many women do we read of in the gospel, who in all the duties of assiduous attendance on Christ, liberalities of love and respect, nay even zeal and courage, surpassed even the apostles themselves? We find his cross surrounded, his passion celebrated by the avowed tears and lamentations of devout women, when the most sanguine of his disciples had denied, yea, forswore, and all had forsaken him. Nay, even death itself could not extinguish their love. We find the devout Marys designing a laborious, chargeable, and perhaps hazardous respect to his corpse, and accordingly it is a memorable attestation Christ gives to their piety by making them the first witnesses of his resurrection, the prime evangelist to proclaim those glad tidings, and as a learned man speaks, apostles to the apostles. End of chapter 41